Hi, in this segment, I'm going to continue analyzing the Hill cipher and we'll break it using so-called non plain text ciphertext pairs. Okay. In the previous segment, we talked about how the Hill cipher works. So I will very quickly summarize that first. Um, we need we need a message matrix, right? Our message is basically uh, split into um, M blocks, right? And um, we need a key matrix, which is, let me call this key matrix as M by M key matrix, right? This is key matrix. And this is, this uh, row vector is basically our message. Uh, maybe let's use yeah, X not to confuse with the, with the M. Let's call it X1, X2, all the way until XM, right? So this is our message. So what we are going to do now is we take our uh, message. This is our message, remember? A message block to be more precise, M block. We multiply it by an M by M key matrix. This is our key matrix. What we get is a cipher block, right? How many elements here? It's going to be Y1, Y2, all the way up to YM, obviously, because we are dealing with M character block, right? So the question is, uh, is the secure? Is the Hill cipher secure? One possibility is to try to brute force this matrix, M by M matrix. That, that may not be a good idea. There are so many um, uh, possible matrices you could think of. The, there are 20, 26 power M square possible matrices and a vast majority of them uh, will be invertible. Therefore, that's, that's going to take a lot of time for you to, to brute force that, okay? So it may be a better idea to think about other means, for example, what if as an attacker, you know um, lots of plain text and ciphertext pairs. Let's say for, a, for, for the purpose of discussion, you got M such a, a plain text ciphertext pairs. So how would you go about attacking? This is one pair, right? So you know this and you know this, okay? So this is the, the plain text part and this is the ciphertext part, okay? Suppose you know, M such pairs, what, how do you go about recovering the, the, key, the key matrix? This is the matrix we want to know what is inside, of course. So we can try the following. Okay, um, all you're going to do is, let's say um, we have another block, right? Another block of message. Let's call it, uh, now we will use some slight notation differences, okay? X1, X2, all the way to X1M. This is going to give us the first. Now, what about the second one? Maybe you have X21, X22, right? All the way until X2M. You will be multiplying this again with the same matrix. That's the idea of this encryption scheme. So that will give you another equation, right? You will have on your, le on your left-hand side, um, y21, y22, all the way until y2m. Okay, so you have another equation now. All right. So if you, if you try this, uh, say, let's assume you happen to know m, um, m plain text ciphertext pairs. So what you are having now is basically a system of m by m equations. So you don't know all the M square entries that are part of the key matrix. That's what you wanted to recover, right? Um, all you can do is you can rewrite this whole thing as follows. Let me rewrite everything as follows. So all I'm going to do is, um, okay, I have the cipher matrix capital C, right? And I have my message matrix capital M made of M rows because you happen to know um, M plain text ciphertext pairs, right? And you're multiplying this by an unknown K matrix. So let me explain the dimensions more carefully. This is an M by M, small M, right? 
m by m matrix because you happen to know m pairs of plain text ciphertext and this is also an m by m matrix because you have your um, each row of your capital m matrix is one block of m characters so you are having m such rows right you, you know m blocks of your plain text so to speak so you need to recover this, this K is also M by M. So how do you go about it? You, all you have to do is apply matrix algebra. Multiply the equation both sides by M inverse, right? If M inverse exists, then you can easily reco recover it, right? So you, you found the key K now. So you know capital C, you know capital M, therefore you are able to compute this and you will get the key K, which is the matrix that you wanted to have, all right? So given, um, M pairs of plain text cipher text pairs, um, the Hill cipher is broken in this uh, approach. Okay, let me convince you that is the case by showing you an example, okay? So what I'm going to show to you is my simple example, right? Um, I'm going to show to you that, suppose you are encrypting a message, say crypt Hill, you get some gibberish cyber text, right? And uh, I'm going to show to you, given the message and the ciphertext, we can recover this unknown key. Let's assume we don't know this key K, right? And I will, I will show you, we can recover this, exactly this key that you're seeing, the three by three matrix that you're seeing here. So here's the algorithm that I talked about, right? Um, all we are doing is taking our message matrix and we are inverting it first and multiplying it by the ciphertext matrix. Uh, in mod n because we are dealing with 26 um, from numbers from 0 to 25 okay that's basically the the mod n all right let's let's run it as you can see here i i got the matrix printed is exactly the same matrix that i have here so this algorithm is essentially taking this script hill as an input right the known plain text and the ciphertext and it chops it into M. Remember, I need to know M pairs of plain text ciphertext pairs. And that's basically how we transform these uh, alphabet characters into numbers and then prepare a matrix. So we are having a M by M matrix. I can also print and show to you. Here are the M by M matrix, just to convince you how things are working. Okay. So let me show you the message matrix first and then I'll show you the ciphertext matrix. Okay, so here is the ciphertext matrix. So we can see here message is C, capital C stands for um, ABC's third character. That means we start from counting from zero. So we get two. Um, we can con um, convert this easily into a matrix like this. That's basically what we are doing in encoding. And the same we do with this uh, ciphertext also. So we have two matrices, message matrix and ciphertext matrix. And we just uh, multi take the multiplicate the inverse of message matrix. Uh, we multiply ciphertext with ciphertext matrix with message matrix inverse to get the answer. That's all. Um, that's basically how you could go about and breaking any linear sort of cipher for that matter. So you don't you don't want to have in your cryptographic system anything like this, where the ciphertext is just a linear combination of uh, keys, right? In this case, what you are seeing here is essentially in, in a matrix perspective, um, you, you are basically having a set of linear equations. When you multiply a matrix by another matrix, what you're doing is basically you're taking this, and for example, first, there are multiple ways to multiply matrices. You take the first row and multiply it with first column, okay? That means uh, here are the messages. These are the individual message characters and here are the keys. So you're combining um, different messages and different keys to form the first um, character of your ciphertext here. So let me draw the ciphertext matrix. So you get this, this, this particular cell by taking a linear combination of the first row and the first column. And that gives you one equation. Okay, and now you do the same. You take the first row and you multiply it with the second column to, to get the second uh, entry of your ciphertext and so on. So, if you do, this is uh, M by M, and this is also M by M, right? So 
I will be more careful now. Um, you get from the first row multiplied with the ent entire matrix, you get M equations, okay? And you will do the same for the second row and third row. So you are going to have, uh, to be more precise, M square equations and M square unknown variables, which is perfectly solvable. That's what we did. Um, if you have a system of equations where you have um, all the equations are independent of each other, um, then you will be able to easily solve it using uh, linear algebra. That's exactly what we did to, to find the, um, the key K. Okay. I hope this, this clarifies the, the attack, how the uh, linear ciphers like Hill cipher can be broken easily, right? Just take the message, multiplying it with the key to give you a cipher text. You can easily reorganize it as a matrix multiplication problem. And then you're just doing simple inverse to find out the unknown component variable K. All right, thank you very much for your attention. That's all.